Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be all about candle testing. And yes, I have a wonderful surprise for you which is going to help you out with this testing process so much. So if you're excited to get started with your candle testing, join me in this video. beautiful people and welcome back to my channel if you are new here we talk all about the business journey candle business journey starting a candle business how to test your candles you know where to get your materials from and also diving deeper into the business model of starting and running and growing a candle business there are so many things in between when you start a business of course testing your candles or whatever product you're building is going to be key but there's getting your LLC your EIN you know establishing your business setting up your website if you decide you need one I mean you can do Facebook marketplace only if you want or Instagram however you want to sell your product but I prefer using a professional website so I do use Shopify for that um, and then you know we talk about how to get money you know buying these materials for testing or even just starting your business can get really expensive so I also talk about some grant opportunities and things of that nature and we just basically you know go from ground zero to getting your business up and running and then beyond that to growing your business and beyond that of how you can get money for your business grants free money to help you basically grow your business so you don't have to go into business debt how to manage your business money how to get business credit we're going to talk about all of that stuff on this channel so if you're interested in all of those things then go ahead click the subscribe button click the like button click the notification bell i try to do videos as often as i can but i am extremely busy because i still do work a nine to five i actually love my job so i'm not going to be quitting that um ever <laughs> and i run my candle business avro candle co i have a t-shirt and kind of women's leisure wear business wire stitch wirestitch.com is where you can get you know just you know the motto for that is wearing your expression so if you're having a bad hair day if you feel like you're a female ceo or whatever it is that you want to say without saying um, then you can get some of those things from this website at wirestitch.com. I also have the men's beard and skincare products here. It's called His Origin. That's really evolving and developing and I'm really excited about that. It's not where I want it to be yet, but it's growing, you know, so I'm looking for male beard models. If you know one, have them email me. It's in the description box below. Um, and then outside of that, I have government contracting going on. Um, that is a beast in itself, depending on what you are contracting to the government. It can be a lot of work. And in the beginning, it's really slow. Like the contracts that you'll get can be like $1,000 to $10,000. Then it'll move up to maybe $20,000, 25 And then once you really, really get in there, then you start making the millions. So it's definitely a lucrative business to have. Um, and then, uh, I feel like I'm leaving something out. I've got so much going on. Um, I have two of my businesses on Amazon. So Wire Stitch, you can buy those products on Amazon and also his origin. You can purchase on Amazon. My husband and I are working on Amazon FBA business, um, so that we can get a product out there that's pretty much automated and we're going to be doing some drop shipping with that and that's really about it i believe every entrepreneur should have multiple streams of income my goal is to have seven so that i always have money flowing in i have money flowing in when i'm sleeping when i'm awake when i'm on vacation you know we also dabble in investing in the regular stock market um as well as crypto crypto sucks right now i know um but i still believe in it it's not going anywhere there are so many cities and states adopting it and so yeah i think it's going to be um very lucrative in the future um but right now you know just watching the markets but anyhow i'm going down a rabbit hole here 
what this video is truly about today is um candle testing so i have built a pdf candle testing workbook um and so i am going to put that up um put the link in the description box below if after watching this video you feel like the candle testing workbook is going to be something key for you in your testing process i think it really really helps um so you should definitely consider getting it um and yeah just go from there so what in the candle workbook here's one of the worksheets um so you basically start your testing process and on the worksheet you'll see it if you get the pdf um it'll say basically what date are you starting your candle testing so you'll write your date what type of wax are you using um today i'm using cocoa apricot wax what wick type are you using today i'm using the wooden wooden wick um whisper boosting 0.03 wick what is the wick size it is 0.625 inches um what is the vessel that i'm using i'm using these vessels they're completely dirty old stickers because when i test i don't use new jars i just use the jars that i basically um burn my own personal candles in because that's the perks of being a candle business owner you don't have to buy candles from anyone else if you don't want you could just make your own um and so that's what i do and after they're done burning you know i'll just clean out the jar and just use the jars for testing or making another candle um so i'm using the 12 ounce aura jars from mexi um and then on the sheet it has a space where you put wax melt tip so my wax i usually melt it in my melting pot up to 200 degrees and so once it hits that point i pour it in my pouring pitcher and then i allow it to cool down to 170 degrees at least nothing above that so 170 degrees to about 165 degrees to mix my fragrance oil um and then after I mix the fragrance oil, I pour it at about 150 to 160 degrees. That's on here as well, so you write that down. Um, if you're using any additives, there's a space here. What I mean by additives is if you're using like glitters and micas and dyes and all that stuff, which I tend not to use because I like for my candle to be really pure. We did an experiment with this jar. <laughs> you can watch that in the video here. The jar started out completely white, as you see behind me. Then I tried to use the dye and it was cool. It's cute. Um, a very cute mistake happened, but I don't think I'm gonna be using dyes in my candles. I'm just not a fan of it. Um, and then it kind of messed with and altered the scent of this candle a little bit. It wasn't as strong as what I would have liked. Um, and I'm not committed to it. So I didn't try to retest it and put, you know, 12% fragrance oil in there instead of 10%. Um, so, you know, we're not going to do that. Um, so then when you go down the list, you put down what your fragrance oil name is going to be. So whatever fragrance oil you're using, put down the name of it so you don't forget. I also have these little post-its because a lot of the stuff on uh, the sheet is, you know, going to be the same in terms of what wax that I'm using for me. I use the same wax. I use the same wig. You can check this video out if you want to know, you know, how to go about testing your wigs. I already found my wig size, so I don't need to do that. So for all of these, I'm going to be using the same exact wig. What I'm testing today mainly is fragrance to see what the hot throw and cold throw looks like for different fragrances. Um, so I'll use these post-its here just to write down each fragrance name so that I don't get things mixed up. And then I go from there. Um, once the candle has cured and solidified, you can write down cure time. How long did you allow each candle to cure? <coughs> Excuse me, I should have brought water. How long did you allow each candle to cure before you actually burned it? Um, then you're going to put down if the cold throw was weak, <coughs> weak or if it was strong, the hot throw 
Now when it comes to hot throw, right, I tend to take the candle and when you get down to the bottom where it says burn time, this is where you're going to calculate your hours and all of that. So I'll say, okay, for the first candle, I'm going to burn it for two hours because initially when you first burn a candle, you're supposed to burn it for two hours. I'm going to burn it for two hours, so I'm going to write down hours burned, two hours. What was the flame height? You can take like a little measuring ruler and kind of try to measure without touching the flame how high the flame is. Then you're going to write that down. Then you're going to see, you know, how deep is your melt pool? Um, you can get like a metal therm um, ruler and so you can stick it in there and when you bring it up, of course, the wax will be on the ruler and you'll be able to see where it stopped. Or you don't have to do that at all if you don't want, but I think that that's kind of important because it'll tell you um, how fast the wick is actually burning. And this candle, um, if you were testing wicks, this candle's melt pool could be just a few, you know, an inch down and then this one could be two inches. It just depends. Um, and then you want to take your thermometer and you want to test the temperature of the outside of the jar after it's been burning for two hours and then you want to test away from the flame the temperature of the actual wax after it has burned for two hours after that you're going to allow it to burn for two more hours so then you're going to write hours burn four hours you're going to do it all over again flame height melt pool wax temp all of that good stuff and then you're going to snuff you hear me snuff not blow out you're going to use the snuffer and snuff it okay then you're going to allow it to solidify after it solidifies you're going to trim the wick again some people blow their candles out snuff their candles and then when they're ready to relight it they just light it no when you get that little black piece especially on a wooden wick you want to clip that off so you can start new and fresh for your next burn because if you leave that on Nine times out of ten, what's going to happen is you're going to get a ton of soot. Your flame or your candle is going to be extremely high. Um, these are natural materials, so sometimes they can burn a little different from one another. But if you're not properly taking care of the candle, it's not going to burn right, okay? Always allow your candle to burn for two hours. If you burn your candle, let's say for an hour, then you blow it out, What's going to happen is the next time you burn your candle, it's likely going to tunnel and that's not going to look good. It's not going to be right. Um, so make sure you're taking care of your candles. Don't have your candle lit and have a ceiling fan blowing or have it under your AC vent because that air is going to cause the flame to move. It's going to start sitting and it's just going to go crazy. So having a candle can be a little bit high maintenance, especially when it's a wooden wick burning candle. Um, I really like wooden wick candles because of the ambiance and because of the crackling is very soothing to me. Um, I am actually though going to start testing with um, some hemp wicks or some natural zinc free metal free um, cotton wicks to see how they do um, to see if I like it. And then I may offer both options because there are some people who like wooden wicks and some people who like cotton wicks. So I want to, you know, gain both audiences and both type of customers. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and test with those pretty soon as well. And guess what? This is going to help. My worksheet is going to help because I'm going to be able to write all this stuff down. If you begin testing your candles and you're not writing stuff down and you don't have everything organized, you're going to forget what you put in there, how much the fragrance load was, what your temperatures were and all of that. So this just makes it easier um, to go about testing in the proper way. Now, after it's been cured and everything and I've clipped it, what I like to do when I do my burn testing, of course, I do it two hours, four hours, wait till it solidifies, do it two hours, check it, four hours, check it, basically until the candle completely burns out. Normally with a customer, they're going to do four hour cycles on their candles. That is the recommended time. You don't ever want to let it burn longer than that. However, if you are a candle business owner, you can burn it as long as you want, as long as you're watching it. You may not be using these type of jars. You may get a faulty jar. You could have your candle burning when you're testing for 10 hours and then it bursts. 
you just never know so always make sure you're watching it i don't recommend burning it longer than four hours but if you decide that's what you want to do i would definitely caution you um, to make sure you're sitting there for 10 hours watching it so that you're not causing any fires or damage to your home um, so anyhow after it's completely cured and I've lit it I'll let it burn for four hours in my bathroom then I'll tack down you know what was the hot throw like in the bathroom was it strong how did it smell you know things like that then I'll take it to my bedroom which is a larger space I'll do a four hour cycle there just to see like how was the hot throw was it good did it fill the entire room after that I'll do a four hour cycle in my living room to see if it spreads from the living room to the kitchen how far does it go how far does it reach just to test the hot throw there um, and then I'll do it in my basement which is really big and that'll give me an idea of if it can fill a room this big if it's very faint and the smell is very light in the basement you can do one or two things you can up your fragrance low or you can try to double wick it um i'm testing a double wick wooden wick now you can see that here in the corner i'm still going through my cycle so it's not completely done um but actually i did a pretty good job on the first try you know after two hours I got the perfect melt pool and it's burning really nicely I will say that the flame is starting to get a little higher than what I would like but it's not like dangerously high and it's not sitting or anything like that and the scent that I'm using is super super strong I mean it's so strong so I'm, I'm loving it right now um, but anyway we're gonna go ahead and start this process and you really don't really need to see me do this but I'm gonna do it anyway um, for the sake of you know the video because we're talking about testing now there was a video that I did here um, for the new beginners who hasn't started anything some people get their jars and they want to know well how much should I fill it where should I fill it to for me I already know this is a 12 ounce jar I put 340 grams of wax which is 12 ounces of wax um, that is basically the, the recommended fill I think this jar is actually bigger than 12 ounces but you fill it to 12 ounces um, so basically what I do is I take the jar hold that thought let me go and get my wax so my wax is too hot but while we're waiting for that to cool I want to talk a little bit about fragrances right so let me get my trusty little box here oh and as you know I'm on my workout journey so I have on my um, my sweet sweat you know band trying to get it together I've been working out so I got this headband on because these edges are not right when you're working out they sweat out but you know what it's a journey here and we're on it I'm on it I don't know if you need to <laughs> lose weight or not but I sure do and I'm trying so anyway I have this basket I don't know if you can see it but it has a ton of fragrances a lot of people have asked me about mixing fragrances um and I've done it before basically when you get some of the wooden wick fragrances I'll show you Hold on. so I like to get these as well they're like little um tester kits but anyhow in those you get um, let me put this back you get these little blotters they're testing blotters come on that's the way crazy so basically it looks like this you know kind of when you go and you're in the store and you want to test perfume you spray it on here you do the same thing with these so you'll take 
two fragrances, right? You'll say. You'll look at it. Of course, I like to look at the flash points and make sure, you know, the flash points kind of match. Um, so both of these are 212 degrees flash point. Not really sure if that matters or not, but I just like to mix fragrances that are almost composed the same, I guess. Um, with Wooden Wick or Mexi, their fragrances are very um, elegant and have a bunch of things in them already. So I tend to try to pick something that's a little bit stronger with something that's a little bit more subtle. And what I'll do is I'll take the blotting strip, dip it heavily in this one, dip it heavily in this one, and then I'll take both and I'll throw them in a mason jar and I'll close the mason jar up and I'll basically let it sit. Once I open up the, and you can do it with cotton balls, you can do it with Q-tips, whatever you choose. Um, just make sure you get the same amount on each um, before you put it into the jar and close it up. That'll give you a good idea what those two scents are going to smell like together, right? Um, and then after that, basically what you'll do is you'll do 50-50, right? So, let me see here. Well, we don't need to measure it out. So basically, for a 12 ounce candle, I'm putting 340 grams because I measure in grams and not ounces generally. Um, and then it's going to be 34 grams of fragrance oil, which is 1.2 ounces. So I'll take 17 grams of one and 17 grams of the other. Wait till they measure it in these little cups. Again, if you're using these plastic cups, you're going to make sure that you're mixing your candle fast because if you leave them in there too long, this fragrance oil will burn right through them. I learned that lesson. So you'll put it on your scale, right? You'll put 17 grams of this one. You'll put 17 grams of this one so that it's a 50-50 mix. I like to start that way, stir it up real good, and then mix it into your candle, right? If you're doing, I have a double boiler going today because I have a lot of wax. Um, if you're doing multiple, right, you can do 75-25 in this jar, 50-50 in this jar. You know, however you feel like you want to mix up the fragrance and test it, do it how you please. Just make sure before you commit, you put the, the two blocks into a jar, close it up, and see if you're feeling it or not. Um, because you may try to put two scents together and you're like, ooh, after it sat there for a couple of hours and you open up the jar to smell it, you may not be feeling that. Um, so just make sure you do your testing in that way. Now, I also buy a lot of these like mini fragrances when I'm doing my testing because I just want to test them out and I really don't want to commit um, before I know that, for one, the hot throw is great. For two, I really love the scent and it fits my brand. And for three, um, that it burns well. Um, so today, I'm going to do five different ones that I haven't done before. They make one, what is it? Um, it's not that. Which one was it? It was like chocolate bitters or something like that. When I tell you I am not rocking with that scent at all, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> I don't like it at all. I really don't. Um, two, three. Oh, I got five. Well, I already did this one before. I have to make sure. Why do I have two of these? Always write yourself down as well because sometimes I go crazy buying scents and I end up doubling up when I really don't need to. Let 
Mm, I think I'm going to do that one. Okay. They have to be full bottles, obviously, because this is just two ounces. So make sure your bottle is full if you've used it to make a different candle. You're not going to have enough for your 12 ounce jar. Now, if you're using something smaller, you'll be all good. But I'm not. So we need that. Um, let me check this wax one more time. Okay. Wax is still doing its thing. So what we're going to do is we're basically just going to start wicking. Um, and like I said, I've already wrote it down. Let me make sure that I look at my package, right? I've already done all this before, but I'm doing it for you guys. So it's 0.625. I'm going to write that down for wick size. It's Whister, Whisper Booster Wick 0 0.03. So I'm going to write that down for wick type. Um, don't need to write down anything for the, the wick clips. Um, so we wrote that down. We're ready to go. What I like to do is put my wicks into my clips before I put them in the jar because it's easier to and let's talk about that wick centering um, tools I need to probably buy one but I feel like since I've been doing this so long um, I just kind of know where the center is and with these R jars they have a little center in the middle so it makes it really easy for you to know where to put your wig also when you're taking the wigs out look for things like splits or if the the wig looks like it's not quite right you definitely want to make sure that you're not using that because um, we don't want to be using faulty wigs around here um, which has happened and it wasn't pleasant I've actually switched up my wigs since before um, and sometimes you have to do that if it's not working out for you so I make sure that these are centered when I'm putting these in you don't want them to be off you want them all to be even if one side of the wick is flatter and straighter than the other then use that side because you can always cut the jank side off okay I mean that double boiler is loud sis is looking for attention go ahead oh man Did I get wax on some of these that's not good we're gonna try to make it work though because we're just testing okay this one's probably not oh it stood up candle making can get quite messy start putting them in here as I said before wicked uh, wicked it before you test it that way you'll get the full weight of everything okay this has gotten so much easier for me over the years I'm telling you and like I said, the R jars, it's just easier to do them because it has that nice little circle in there. And I still have some wick residue from older candles in there, so kind of gives me a bit of a, a head start there. So there we have it. Wick them all. 
ready to go. All looking straight. All right. Now, that was, see I didn't clean the wick out of here, the old wick sticker out good enough. So this one's sitting on top of a little bit of residue so it's a little wonky so it's this one you just want to straighten it out it's no big deal um so we have that part done now as i said before we're gonna take one of these jars once i get the wax <clears throat> So I need, I need five little cups here. Two, three, four, and five. Then what we're gonna do is, for me, it doesn't matter what order I go in because, you know, I'm just doing a little, little testing here. And this one I'm gonna write down. Ice bergamot and I'm gonna put that you can put it directly on the jar if you want probably won't stay so I like to just put it in front of the jar and then we're gonna do ginger wood I don't have to write down the whole thing as long as I write down the top of what the fragrance is we're good to go this one is spiked toddy and these are all new for me i've not tested these before but i wanted to make like a little bit of a drink line i guess you could say vintage leather very masculine for the men or women of the world who like masculine scents. This one is a pecan martini. I feel like this one's gonna be extremely sweet, but we'll see. Now, because we're going to be doing this fairly quickly. Now, as I said before, all of this stuff is gonna be the same, the wax, the wick, the pouring temps, all of that good stuff. So we don't need multiple worksheets for this. Um, we just, like I said, need to remember which fragrance went into each jar. Um, and then I have a cool little box here where you can name your candles. Um, I'm not gonna be doing that yet because I tend to make them, allow them to burn, see what hot throw, what scents, what are the top notes, middle notes, bottom notes. How does it make me feel? Does it remind me of a place that I visited or anything like that? Um, before I name my candles, I don't just, you know, look at the name of it, smell it and say, oh, I'm gonna name it this. No, I have to, to burn it, like it's a process. What kind of mood does it give me? What type of vibe, you know? Um, and then I'll name the candles after that. So now what we're going to do, and since we're going to, Generally, when I'm making candles, I'm making full batches of one scent, and so I mix it in the tin. But when I'm testing, I'll just pour everything right in the jar and just mix it around um, for two minutes each. And then after I do that, um, I just allow it to go ahead and solidify. But I always recommend, like, after you're testing it, you know just mix everything up in the pouring pitcher it's just a lot easier and it's better especially when you're doing things in bulk it'll definitely work out for you um so let me go ahead and get this wax okay so we got the wax it is at 190 degrees right now so we're gonna have to allow that to cool down a bit more before we go ahead and burn it um so Remember to write down, I don't know what I did with my pen, but I already know anyway. Write down the wax melt temp. So if it's at 190 degrees, write that down. Um, 
and then go from there and also um i don't know if you watched my wit testing tr trick video basically when you're testing your candles right and say you're in the wig testing phase you can use one jar if you want um to save yourself time and basically what you do is if you feel like this wick was burning too fast or too slow and you want to switch it out but you don't want to have to make a completely new candle what you can do is, is just take a set of pliers like this clamp it down on the wick pull it out and find another wick that you want to use so let's say we want to want to use this one instead and then you'll take it of course if you're using your worksheet you'll write down what's the size of this wick and everything that you're putting in you know that you put in the candle um and then you'll basically just pop the new wick in you'll be able to feel how to get it in there because the wick clip will be at the bottom and so you'll just stick that in the middle and you'll test with that and if that one doesn't work you'll pull this one out and then you'll find another um and then burn it make sure you it's solidified before you pull the wick out of course or your you'll burn yourself with hot wax so that's going to be important okay so that's another little trick i'm giving you everything that i've done in previous videos in one video <laughs> so oh one thing <laughs> The one thing was that I need to actually make sure that I was recording because I don't want to have to do this again. I'm tired, y'all. Um, let's test this again. Okay. So it's getting down there. So for this little trick here, of course, you need your scale. What you're going to do is cut your scale on. And for the sake of measurement, you're going to take it off of grams and you're going to put it back to ounces. Okay. You're going to set your jar on the scale. You're going to make sure you tether it so that it is zero because we do not need the weight of the jar. Right. Um, and what you're actually, let's do it different this time. We're going to do the, the fragrance first and take it back to grams for that I already know that I want to do 10% um, so it's going to be 34 grams come on now it's zero so you take your um, fragrance oil you're gonna do 34 grams Because we're doing a 12 ounce jar. This one smells really good. This is basically what all of my candles are. 34 grams. So then I'm going to take that off. I'm going to go back to ounces. And then I'm going to put the jar back on. I'm going to tether it to zero because we don't want the weight of the jar or the wick for that matter. I'm gonna just pour my fragrance oil right at the bottom. Just like that. So of course that gives me 1.2 ounces. After that, let me just make sure this is all good. It's all good. We're gonna pour in the wax. Okay. And we're gonna allow this to fill to where we feel like it needs to be so that is at least one inch from the top and like I said exactly this is actually about 12.5 ounces with the fragrance in it about 12.5 12.6 right um, then you want to mix it you know I generally mix it for about two minutes 
So I use my timer, I start it, and then we start mixing for two minutes. You can leave it where it is while you're mixing. Um, of course, I've already wrote stuff down here, but what you wanna write down is in the spot where it says fragrance load, you're gonna put 10%. And then where it says fragrance oil um, amount or measurement, you're gonna put 34 grams or whatever it is that you're using for your jar. I'm using 34 grams because it's a 12 ounce jar. And I want a 10% fragrance load. Um, and then you're gonna write down how much wax. So it was about 12.5 ounces. Um, no, that was the complete jar, it was 12.5 ounces. But basically this is a 12 ounce candle, so I'm gonna do 340 grams, which is 12 ounces um, of wax in here. So after you've got your measurement, you're gonna mix this for two minutes. I've already started my timer. Once this goes off, we're gonna be good to go. And again, I usually don't do this. I usually make them in bulk and mix everything in the pouring picture, but for the sake of this video, we're not gonna do that. I just mixed it in the jar so I can make sure that we got what we needed. So I'm gonna sit that there, and we're gonna allow that one to solidify. Now, you can do the same process for all of your candles. Um, since I already know what the wax amount is that I wanna use, I'm basically just going to start pouring my fragrance into my jars, and then I'm gonna pour pour my wax in to basically match. And this is basically how I test my candles. The testing process was the same for me at the beginning as it is now. I mean at the beginning I had to do you know, 10% load, 8%, 12% to see what actually worked. Um, before I got to this point, I don't really need these cups anymore. If you use plastic cups, make sure you throw them away immediately after because even if it's a little bit of fragrance residue left in it it'll still melt through the cup Oof, these all smell so good so here we go i'm gonna pour that in there you know if you have the time and you want to be a thousand percent on point you can take each of these jars pour them do all of that but you don't have to so what I'm gonna do is, I know my wax is still at a great temp. Yep, see, it's right there at 170 degrees. So I'm gonna begin here. I'm gonna pour this in. And I actually hope that I have enough wax because I didn't melt a ton. I may have to go and get some more. But since these candles are basically side by side, I can see, you know, how much wax I'm putting into each of them and they're kind of, you know, basically measuring up the same. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be short. I'm only gonna be able to pour one more. I should have waited before I put the fragrance in there so I'm gonna have to melt some more wax but that is okay um so basically oh yeah let me not forget to stir <laughs> a lot of people say it doesn't really matter as long as you mixed it 
um, you'll be all good. But for me, I'm anal like that and I like to do it for two minutes. So anyway, we're done with pouring. So again, you're gonna put your start date. Um, and then you're gonna write down everything that you did. Your temperatures, how much wax you use, how much fragrance oil you use, what's the fragrance load you use, the type of wick that you used. Um, you're gonna, um, once it solidifies, you're gonna write down how long you allowed it to cure. If it was 24 hours, 48 hours, however long you feel like you need to allow the candle to cure. You are going to write down your wick trim height as well. So when you clip it, you're gonna measure it. It's supposed to be about one fourth inch. Make sure it's there before you light your candle. Then after you light it, you're gonna light it in multiple rooms of your home just to see what the hot throw is. Cold throw, you'll be able to smell right away. So pick up the candle, smell it, see if you can smell the fragrance on top. Um, and then once, once it's burning for two hours, you're gonna measure that flame height. You're gonna measure the melt pool, um, the wax temp, the jar temp. Um, and then you're going to um, allow it to finish that two hour cycle. After the two hours, you're gonna let it continue to burn for two more hours. So now you have your full four hour cycle. And you're gonna write everything down at two hours, at four hours. You're gonna let it solidify. Um, after you've snuffed it, let it solidify again. And then you're gonna go through another four hour cycle and write down everything after two hours again. And then after four hours, basically you're gonna do this all week until the candle burns completely through. through. Um, after you finish hours burned, you're gonna calculate all of your hours and that's gonna give you the time in which your candle burns. So if you burned it for 60 hours, 80 hours, whatever it is, once you're finished and it's burned all the way until the recommended end, then you're gonna write down how many hours that it burned at the end. Um, and then you're gonna go from there. Um, so yeah, if you need to know more about wick testing, you can watch this video here. Candle curing, you can watch this video here. Um, and this video basically showed you the steps from beginning to end. Again, I have my candle testing workbook. It's a PDF. So you just print it out as many times as you want and it gives you multiple workbook pages so you can do your full and complete testing and it gives you note pages in the back if you just want to take notes and say on this particular pecan martini you know candle some of the top notes smells like vanilla and the bottom notes or whatever um, you know, it was stronger after four hours than what it was at two hours. You know, just write down your notes and everything like that and keep track of what you're doing um, so that you'll know. Also, in the um, candle testing workbook, there is a materials list. So basically everything that I used here today and everything that I feel as a candle maker you will need to do your testing and make the best candle is also on this list. Um, and I will leave the link for the candle testing workbook below so you can get that if you would like. If you have your own method, by all means use your own method. But I just think that this is more organized and it works better for me. Again, the worksheet is super helpful so you can print it out as many times as you want. You can copy it, make a hundred copies, boom, you're ready to go, you know. Um, so hopefully this helps you, it has everything. I also put a fragrance load guide in here so you can see for five ounce candle and you want 10%, this is how much you're gonna put for a particular jar, things of that nature. Um, and yeah, you can just go from there. So hopefully this video really helped with your beginning stages of testing out candles or testing out fragrances. If you're testing different wicks for one fragrance, hopefully all of this will help you. Um, and yeah, I just thank you beautiful people so much for supporting this video, watching this video, for purchasing my candle testing workbook. If you do, I truly appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I will be back next time with a different video. Um, we need to talk more business stuff, so <laughs> we're
we're going to be going over that. There are more new grants I've heard of that I'm going to be applying for that I want to share with you. So I'm going to put those out there. Some people have been asking about business credit. You definitely want to leverage that. We're going to be talking about that. Um, and we're going to be doing some more candle stuff. So again, thank you so much loves for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.